What's up, beautiful people? Hey Welcome back to the What's Up, Beautiful People podcast. We're so glad that you're here today. Yes. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to this podcast, I'm just going to say it right out the gate. That's the <laughs> first thing you need to do right now, where, wherever you're listening. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever, subscribe. Or you can subscribe to the Family Made uh, Podcast Network on YouTube, where you may be watching right now. Either way, we wanted to say thank you. We have a yes. really exciting episode today. Mainly because at the end of the episode, we always do this beautiful people uh, segment where we highlight a beautiful person and what they're doing in the world. And we have a live interview with yes. an amazing person. You're going to want to make sure you listen all the way through and uh, watch that part. Listen to that part. For sure. Uh, because it's it's fascinating. We just actually mm -hmm. uh, finished it up with her. And yeah. she's amazing. She's a beautiful person. It's awesome. Absolutely. So, but today we're talking about, speaking of waiting until later, uh, you're going to have to wait <laughs> for that. But you should not always wait. This is an episode about procrastinating. It's actually, um, mm -hmm. I have this book right here behind me called The Art of Getting It Wrong. And one of the chapters is called if you just keep if you if you keep putting it off it's just gonna suck more <laughs> and uh, the idea mm. is uh, a lot of the stuff that I've been you know I don't know if you want to call it fortunate enough, <laughs> fortunate enough. <laughs> to make it through or whatever uh, mm. a lot of the pain I've brought upon myself in my life and brought upon our family and in, in my life is due to uh, procrastinating it's, I would say that both of us definitely fit that um, mm -hmm title of procrastinator at times. Yeah. I think there are times where we're really, really good yes. about taking care of business, getting organized. There's seasons for sure, yeah. but both of us have some procrastinator in us. Procrastinatory sure. tendencies. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're not alone in this. Actually, Jenny, our, um, our producer sent us over some stats mm -hmm. today. 20% uh, of individuals identify themselves as chronic procrastinators. As per research by Dr. Joseph Ferrari, great last name, a <laughs> professor of psychology at DePaul University in Chicago. Distraction was found to be the most common reason for procrastination, 48%. And this is followed by a feeling of being overwhelmed and unable to decide where to start. That's 40%. Mm. Uh, the brief study concluded that a long-term procrastination can affect physical and and mental health due to ineffective coping mechanisms and greater perceived stress. I believe it. So this is real. Yeah. And I will say that the mental uh, health side of this, physical health side of this, comes from the stress of hmm. the consequences of your procrastination. I would say the consequences, <clears throat> but also just mentally, because when you have something kind of looming over you, mm -hmm. that yeah. that creates a lot of internal stress yeah. Yeah. that doesn't necessarily need to be there, yeah. but you let it linger. And yeah. I think that that can create problems as well. Yeah. So. yeah. And, uh, you know, in the book, I, I give a couple of examples of, of ways that I've done this and uh, offer up some encouragement. But, you know, one of the biggest stories that I think you and I maybe both uh, may, maybe hits closest to home because I would say probably the most expensive mistake that mm. I've made as far as procrastination goes. Um, I'm not exactly a Mr. Fix it. Uh, I, you I'm, always say I'm that, not... but I would say you, you are, you, you feel like you're not, but when you do things, <laughs> It goes well. You do a good job. Why to speak life over me, babe? It's true, though. <laughs> it's true. You. He always says this. He's like, I'm not good at fixing things. I'm not good at like maintenance and that kind of stuff. But every time you just jump in there and do it, me and the kids will say like, hey, you know, you did a really good job with well, that. Well, I have learned better ways of fixing things through worse ways of fixing <laughs> trial and error over the years. Uh, yeah i would agree with that in this particular instance i did have some plumbing experience because i used to run a rodeo arena as much as you may not believe that <laughs> um and we had a lot of plumbing stuff we had to do when you um have an arena it's a lot of dust and so you have to like install different sprinkler systems and things like that and keep the dust down and so i did have some experience with uh, plumbing. But in this particular instance, we were living in San Antonio. We had a great backyard, great deck, great everything. Our, we, we spent every waking moment that we could in that backyard on mm. that back deck. Uh, and there was a water spigot out there uh, that we were getting ready to go on vacation. And uh, there was like a little drip and it, you know, and I was like, oh, I need to fix that. 
Someone should really fix that. And I think every, <laughs> every single day I was like, man, I need to fix that. Somebody needs to fix that. You know? You'd say that too. <laughs> I think that is kind of the thing though. Like a lot of times that. Someone. Yeah. Needs to. <laughs> it, it's easy to identify a problem and yeah. then be like, man, that really needs to be taken care of and not like take personal responsibility. I think yeah. that's something that we both kind of default to is like someone will get around to that. You know, Somehow you feel like you're accomplishing something by saying, man, I really need to get to that. You At know. least like acknowledging it, I guess, is the first step. Yeah. But if you never move beyond that, yeah, nothing. So happens. it was like it was like two weeks, you know, and the drip got worse, and I would tighten it, you know, and I'm, oh, that's good, good job, Stephen, you're so good at fixing things, <laughs> just by like you know tightening it. Now that'll that'll work. The drip got worse, and the drip got worse, and the drip got worse, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna schedule to have this fixed when we get back, and it'll be fine. So we go to the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> we get back. That's no longer a, a small little drip. I mean, it's like pretty, pretty hardcore uh, dripping and it's like kind of rotted through the wood. And like, so I'm like, oh man, I need to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. And so I call my buddy Colin, who's like the most interesting man in the world. He can do anything. He's like great guitar player, amazing tattoos, killer beard. And, and I'm, I'm just in, in, in my, like what, what I had done is that I had built it up in my mind that this is going to cost so much. To fix. They're going to have to rip out the brick. They're going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to pay a plumber. It's going to cost me thousands of dollars to fix this leaky spigot on the, on the wall. Colin shows up with an $8 part from Home Depot and a pair of channel locks. Yep. Boom. Done. Five minutes of work. It was an easy fix. It was an easy fix. It was not thousands of dollars. Until. Yeah. It wasn't initially thousands of dollars. <laughs> the water bill showed up. Uh, and it was the world's smallest violin started playing as I opened Wasn't it? the envelope. I think it was $2,500. Yeah, $2,500. And Boy, that was so, ugh. that was so painful. <laughs> that was so painful. And we, we did call in and we're like, can you guys work with us? Like yeah. we had no idea that that was how much water was being used. It was also, I think, wasn't it August? No, it, this was it, this, this was, was spring. spring break. Yeah, yeah this spring. Was spring break. But nonetheless, you know, it's like, are you serious right now? Yeah. And I tried to call, and you know, you were like, man, maybe maybe if I call, maybe if we plead with them listen. to have mercy, they'll work a deal with us. They did not, which is another life lesson that you can't always fix things. After Sometimes the fact. you just have to deal <laughs> with the consequences. Yeah. But also a great life lesson to us that. Uh, if you just keep putting it up, if you if you keep putting up, it's just going to suck more, you know, uh, because what should have been an eight dollar fix uh, became a twenty five hundred dollar bill, and uh, I think that's probably I think our most expensive procrastination devastation. It was a big one for sure. I think we've had a few over the years like that, but most mm. of the time it's in the little things. Yeah, they feel. Like it's not going to be the end of the world, but they 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 add up and they yeah. do weigh on you and they affect your quality of life. Yeah. Um, and it's something that I think you and I are becoming a lot more aware of that it really does um, take a toll on you. Yeah. And it's something that like doesn't have to happen. Like mm -hmm. if we can get a handle on it and we can become more proactive mm -hmm. in how we to do things like it, it's yeah. going to go a lot better and we're going to feel less stressed. I did think um, I had this kind of thought that I think maybe certain personality types maybe lean more towards procrastinating than others. And I think sometimes that is because mentally you're thinking like, I feel overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. Yeah. I feel like I'm probably an Enneagram nine and I know that they can kind of lean that way where it's like, if you feel like you don't have all the answers or you feel like you don't know exactly how it's going to go, then you just kind of wait because you're mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't know how to, how to handle this or I don't know exactly, I don't know if it's going to be perfect, right? You want it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And so I can tend to be that way sometimes. Yeah. And then it just, the, this internal stress builds up because yeah. you have this thing that's looming over you. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I have really been trying to be more aware of yeah. and proactive about um, in recent months and years because yeah. I, I do want to make sure that we're, we're not like letting that affect yeah. how we do life, you yeah. know? 
Well, I think, you know, for me, and I think this is the case with a lot of people as well, the, the reason to put things off is because I allow my mind to build this thing up mm. that it's going to be so hard or it's going to be so bad or it's going to be so expensive or so unenjoyable, mm. you know, and so I just keep pushing that off because, you know, I'm a party animal. Like I, I was want- going to say, you're Enneagram <laughs> 7, so you're like, I like I all the positive, happy feelings. I don't want to do things I don't want to do. I don't like the negative feelings yeah. or the stressful feelings. Let's just make those yeah. go away. Yeah. But, like, when you, look at, when you look at life in reality, this is the case, I think, a lot of the time. When you actually get t- to do the dang thing that you're supposed to do, it's rarely ever, if ever, as bad as you've built it up in your mind to be. You can take this molehill and turn it into Mount Everest if you're not careful. Um, case in point, like our kids, we, we made this little uh, TikTok a couple years ago of our kids ordering pizza, you know, <laughs> and they're just like, oh God, please don't pick up. Please don't pick up. And then the guy opens, it's like they're, it's like they're imagining he's this like blood sucking vampire on the other end of the phone line. And like, yeah, he's all, like you don't his name's like, order a pizza. His name's like Herbert. And he's like really excited to take your order and give you like <laughs> a one, you know, one way trip to pleasure town uh, with, oh with gosh. his culinary goodness. Like that's, you know, uh, the reality of the situation in this case, the reality was I had built it up in my mind that like, this is going to be so hard. This is going to stink so much. It's going to be so expensive to fix this spigot. It was $8 and five minutes of my life. Uh, you know, going to the DMV to get my registration done on my car, uh, guilty. You know, I put that off as long as I can. Cause I'm just imagining it being this like horrible experience where I have to wait for hours and hours and hours. And the person who's going to help me is going to be so angry and mean because they hate their job and they hate their life and they hate me by extension. I will say though, going to the DMV is not enjoyable. And there are times where people have to wait a long time. Like that's uh, that's not an inaccurate stereotype, right? Well, I say that, but like the last time I went, I was in and out in five minutes and the lady was extremely nice. Yeah. You know? I mean, sometimes it can it can be that way. Yeah. But like, even if it is going to be a long wait, even if it is, even if the person behind the desk is going to be grumpy and not want to really, you know, help you, like... Which does happen. It, it does. It, it can happen, right? Which is why it, that's the stereotype. That's why no one wants to go to the DMV. But, but getting it out of the way knowing that you don't have that hanging over your head anymore, that it's one less thing to have to think about, to worry about, to keep track of, that ultimately is so much better yeah. than putting it off and thinking to yourself every day, oh, I, I really got to get around to that. Yeah. Really, Because what's worse is that you uh, get a ticket and you have to pay hundreds of dollars uh, to, you know, yeah. because you weren't, you didn't have your registration done properly. Or you go and you're, for example, my case that I talk about in the book, you go and you've put it off a year and a half <laughs> and you have to pay $700 when it should have been 30 Yeah, those know? late fees. Out those, that's probably the second most expensive putting it off experience. Mm-hmm. So if you don't put it off, you'll be at least $3,500 richer. <laughs> uh, that's, you know. It, but what I think we could do, and actually Jenny um, sent us over some things that Dr. Ferrari uh, suggested that you do um, to help you with procrastination. But one of the most practical things that I think you can do is kind of identify what your self monologue is. What's your internal monologue? What's your self talk look mm-hmm. like? Yeah. And for me, one of those things is if I know in general that on the, on the other side of this hindsight's 2020, right? We're going to talk about that in just a little bit um, with Haley, our, our beautiful person, um, I love that. That's a great title for people. You're a beautiful person. I'd love to have you on. <laughs> beautiful person of <laughs> the day. Like, we like message them. Hey, you're a beautiful person. Would you like to come <laughs> on our podcast? Hey, the, the, the internal monologue is that like, if I know what I know after the fact that really it wasn't that bad, you know, mm-hmm. can't I just like reverse engineer that process and tell myself at the, at the beginning of it, Hey buddy, or I call myself bro. Hey bro. <laughs> you know, bro. like it's not going to be that bad. Uh, Put on your big boy box of briefs, get it done. Cause it's no matter how bad it is, it's not going to be as bad as it would be if you keep putting it off. And so then you sort of have this, like, give yourself this like pep talk, you know? Um, but the, uh, what, what Dr. Ferrari suggested that you do, he has three, 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 um, methods that he recommends. Um, it's one is the one, two, three method. If you find yourself procrastinating, count to three and start doing what you have to do. 
This way your brain is conditioned to eliminate procrastination every time you do this count. Hmm. It's pretty interesting. Kind of like one, two, three, go. with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> one, two, I'm going to count to three and you, <laughs> like, you just you have to better. actually get to three and then <laughs> stick with it. I feel like That's that would right. be, that yeah. might be kind of challenging. That might work for some people. Yeah. Other people, maybe not so much. Yeah. I know like with some of our kids, we'd be like, okay, we want you to clean your room. Yeah. One, two, you, you're getting to three and they're like not even phased, right? Yeah. With other, some of our other kids, they know like if you are counting to three, they're like, oh my gosh, she's on yeah. two, you know? Yeah. Um, so certain personalities might gravitate towards that, but maybe I, not. I actually all. like that. I have a, another podcast idea that I want to do um, for entrepreneurs who have built things that are cool. I want to call it one, two, three, don't suck. Because the idea <laughs> is if you're a successful person, it's because you actually did the dang thing. You know? Right. You didn't just you didn't talk keep about saying, it. You know, one day I'd really like to, you know, so they all kind of did that. One, two, three, don't suck. Like, do, let's do this thing, you know? Mm. Um, the other, the next is the one minute method. If you're procrastinating on a task, force yourself to work on it for just one minute. Mm -hmm. Usually this acts as the start that one needs and makes finishing the work way easier. That's really that good. That is one that definitely works for me. Mm -hmm. I've noticed, um, I'll tell myself or even like five minutes or mm -hmm. if it's like even just like getting around to cleaning the house and I'll say, I'm going to give it 10 minutes you know, do as much as I can in 10 minutes. And then by the end of that 10 minutes, I'm usually in the middle of something mm -hmm. and I'm kind of on a roll and I just keep yeah. going with it, right? If you can get into it and just say, I'm just going to like set a very realistic small amount of time and say, you know, if you, if you do five minutes, mm -hmm. that's all you need to do. But usually you get into those five minutes and you're feeling pretty good about your progress and that yeah. does encourage you to keep going. Yeah, there's a book called The War of Art. Not to be confused with Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Um, and he talks about the starting is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. Like th all of life around you is trying to introduce friction into your life to keep you from starting. This thing introduces friction to keep you from starting because it's so much easier to feel like you're accomplishing something by scrolling on your phone and reading stuff and watching other people accomplish things. Mm -hmm. You're vicariously accomplishing, you get all this fixing up your house by watching <laughs> other people fix up their house, you know, but the starting is the hardest part. So I like mm -hmm. that one minute method. Just force yourself, say one, two, three, go, and then take one minute mm -hmm. and just start. You know, uh, and this last one's a little more interesting. Uh, it's called the bracelet technique. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor for today's episode, BetterHelp. Life can get crazy and we have both been taking some time to care for our own minds and bodies when we can, because let's be honest, being run down is the worst. That's right. And we've been using BetterHelp for the past year or so, and it's made such a difference. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And it's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Not to mention the online chat ability is a game changer. With our busy schedule, sometimes the only time I have is to chat with my therapist online. And they have a special offer for our listeners. Get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com slash B-E-A-U-T. That is 10% off of your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash B-E-A-U-T. Okay? And now back to the show. It says for this technique, you have an elastic bracelet on your wrist. I wonder if that's like a, like a WWJD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would Jesus do? He would do it right now. <laughs> for this or technique, like a hairband. Yeah, you have an elastic bracelet on your wrist. This method trains your behavior to match your goals. Whenever you find yourself procrastinating, snap the elastic bracelet on your wrist. This associated physical pain with negative thoughts of delaying work. Finally, once you finish your work, reward yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> This method is one of the most effective ways of overcoming procrastination as suggested by Dr. Maraby. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, rewarding yourself does work well yeah. with people in general, right? Yeah. Works well with kids a lot of times. If mm -hmm. you have that kind of, you say, here's a goal that we're going to do. And if we do that, then we'll we get, get to enjoy Andy's this. frozen custard after. Yeah, frozen custard. That works real hey, well. Hey, buddy, if you good. just go to the gym, we'll go have ice cream after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs to be something that's not <laughs> counterproductive, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that, man, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just a couple of, you know, practical, I guess, scientifically proven methods to uh, to stop procrastinating. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think, you know, there are phrases that you tell yourself and that are told to you. Um, I, call them, I call them dad phrases. Because they stick with you. Mom have moms have phrases too. That's not to diminish things, but you know her dad. When we were dating, 
<laughs> he had a few of those phrases that just, they're so punchy. For her, it was make good choices. Yeah, that was a big and one. And for me, it was don't do anything with her you wouldn't do with your grandma. <laughs> And they just stick with you, you know, yeah. one of those is in regards to fixing things. Don't force it. Don't force it. Don't force it. You're going to break it, you know, and measure twice, cut once. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are things her dad told me that have stuck with me. And the, the advice that I have for my kids, if you keep putting it off, it's just going to suck more. So you can tell mm -hmm. yourself, hey, dude, if you keep putting it off, it's going to suck more. Hey, dude, it. if you keep <laughs> putting it off, it's just going to suck more. And then maybe, you know, snap an elastic band on your on your uh, wrist and I say, one, two, three, go. Give yourself a minute to do it. I think it's also important. Sometimes it's just sitting down and kind of thinking through, why do I feel resistant to this? Because sometimes it is small things like that, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it can be a bigger thing. Maybe it is a really hard conversation you need to have yeah. or a boundary that you need to set. Those can be, those can feel really big. And sometimes they are really big. But it is going to be so much worse if you're just letting that loom over you yeah. and not doing those things that are really important that are going to add value to your life and that need to be done. Mm -hmm. So even if it's something that's really hard, maybe take some time to sit down and think through like, um, you know, wh why it feels hard to you and what you can do about it to, to make yourself feel better, to add mm -hmm. value to your life and then go ahead and do that thing so that it's not going to continue to hold you back. Yeah, we talk about these things like they're just sort of menial everyday tasks, but there are probably some things in your life that you know you need to do and you're just putting it off, putting it off because you, you it just feels so big. You know, maybe having a hard conversation with somebody, maybe doing your taxes, maybe, you know, like there's a lot of things that you could do. Maybe going to a counselor to address some things in your life that you know need to change, maybe going to the gym, maybe, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things and I would say you can, uh, you can find someone to help walk you through that. You know, we're, we're always huge advocates of counseling. We're huge advocates of Definitely. Uh, having a trusted person that you can talk to who can give you wise, sound counsel and advice yes. um, and wisdom. Uh, people who have walked the road before you, people who are educated and trained in that way. And um, I think that that's a huge thing that you can do because at the end of the day, you know it needs to happen. So just do the work, do what you need to do, give yourself some good self-talk so you can get motivated to do the thing, maybe employ some of those techniques. And surround yourself with some accountability. If you know that there's a particular area that you're really struggling consistently, find some safe people that you know have your best interest in mind, that you know that you can um, be real with and uh, allow them to speak into your life and allow them to hold you accountable in, in a gentle way, in a way that is not going to you know, make it even harder to do it, right? Yeah. Like you, there are going to be people that you can find, whether that is a counselor, whether that's a friend, whether that's a family member or a spouse or whoever that is. But I found having a little bit of accountability mm -hmm. definitely goes a long way in helping keep you on track and making those, those good choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you keep putting it off, it's just going to suck more. Just do the thing <laughs> and it's going to be okay. We promise you. We promise you it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, you know that in every podcast, uh, we highlight a different beautiful person uh, who's doing amazing things in the world. And uh, this is super exciting because this is our first uh, beautiful people segment where we have a live guest on that we get to interview and not just any live guest. This is like a first for us, but she's a first for like all mankind, like one small step for man. <laughs> uh, it's Haley Arsenault, and um, she. we're going to invite her on to tell her story a little bit, uh, but she's literally like the first uh, like civilian astronaut, uh, yeah. and uh, we couldn't think of a more cool person uh, to yeah. come on to the podcast and highlight. She's got a new book coming out soon called Wild Ride. You're going to want to make sure you pre-order that. Get your hands on that. Just having watched a lot of her stuff already um, and different various interviews and read some of her story, you're going to love this. So welcome to the Beautiful People segment. Haley, so glad to have you Hello on. Guys. Thanks. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Yeah. Um, so you have an amazing story. Yes like just blew us away. Like we've been following your story for a few weeks, ever since we scheduled this interview with you. Uh, I'm like, like we've got, we've got to have her on the podcast because mm -hmm. just so inspiring. You want to tell us a little bit about this? It started out 
when you were 10, you know? So that's a while back. Like, talk about your journey from being a 10-year-old and, and kind of how that, how that began for you. Yes. First of all, thank you for those kind words. Um, my journey really began when I was 10. It kind of life started perfect uh, childhood, um, just beautiful family, um, and life was great. And I was a really active 10-year-old, and um, I was actually working my way towards getting my black belt in Taekwondo when one wow. of my knees began to ache. And so we went to see the doctor. He thought it was just from overuse from the Taekwondo. And, um, and so I kind of rested it, took some over-the-counter meds, the pain seemed to get better, but then the pain started getting worse again. And I started limping. And at this point, my mom took a really good look at my leg and found about an egg-sized lump above my left knee, a knot. Mm. And we went to see the pediatrician. I had an x-ray. And she just walked in and told us, this is bone cancer. Wow. And that, that was the moment that everything changed. Being a 10-year-old, yeah. everyone I had known with cancer had died. And I thought a cancer diagnosis was the same as a death sentence. And so we all just, me and I was with, with my parents, and we all just burst into tears. And I kept saying, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And a few days later... I was on my way to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, and from the moment we walked in the doors of St. Jude, I felt like I was going to be okay. And I spent a year there undergoing some pretty intense chemo, and then I also had surgery to save my leg, where they replaced the part of my bone affected by the tumor with an internal prosthesis. And um, that year at St. Jude was was the most important year of my life. It made me who I am. And wow. I just, I love that place. And so I said, since I was 10 years old, which is 20 years ago, I have said, I'm gonna come back here. I wanna work here. And I wanted to be that source of hope that the staff was for me. And yeah. so I, uh, I got my dream job. I became a physician assistant and I now wow. work at St. Jude. I have the greatest job ever. Um, but what's pretty crazy is um, last year I also became an astronaut <laughs> they, um, <laughs> yeah. and it was for St. Jude. Um, this mission to space called Inspiration4 was being used as a fundraiser for St. Jude. I was selected to be the St. Jude ambassador. Um, wow. so now I'm also an astronaut. That's amazing. That is so cool. That is so cool. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine being you. At, at the age of 10 getting that diagnosis as a we've got seven kids so like I can't imagine you know one of our children walking through walking something. through that either you know and so it just it just shows like number one how how brave you are number two how good God is you know that he you know and and so then you know to, to now have the story that you have is so cool we actually have two kids that are in taekwondo as well so i thought that was um, cool yeah. and you're not that far from us so maybe we can uh, <laughs> yes. come over to memphis and y'all can spar that <laughs> what belts are they uh our our daughter is a yellow belt and our son's a white so they're just getting started yeah they started um, last year so. Yeah, but uh, it's they're having a blast with it. Oh, so sure. last night, and they did, I can imagine, you know, just last night they were doing some sparring stuff, and my son was like, oh, my hand hurts. And I'm like, I can't imagine, like, hearing, oh, you know, I like it, you know, having that go from, oh, my hand hurts from Taekwondo to, wow, there's a can cancer diagnosis here. So, yes. man. And none of us were expecting it. And, yeah. Um, and so that was that was what was so difficult too, was I had gone from this just normal childhood, so healthy, right. I just got my black belt a few days before I got the diagnosis, to wow. all of a sudden I have to go to this cancer hospital in another state and um yeah. and then just become a cancer patient. And but really yeah. what helped me through that was my incredibly supportive family and um and then the staff at St. Jude, my my fellow friends um, who were going through the same thing, they just all helped normalize the situation so much for me. Mm. And um, and actually several of the staff members and my friends going through cancer treatment came to my rocket launch, which That's was so cool. very emotional for me. When I, I came back to earth, we had this big party the next day and, <laughs> um, and I saw my cancer besties and cried because yeah, just how full circle and beautiful. Amazing. 
I love I love that you can say when I came back to Earth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what a phrase <laughs> to be able to say. I think um, something that I, I think about a lot. I, I we love to travel. We just spent the summer traveling and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big city guy. I'm an ocean guy. I'm a mountain guy. I'm a whatever guy. And, uh, one of the biggest things about that is because when you see all this, like the vastness of it, the, the largeness of it, the, the beauty of it, it, it makes you feel like it puts your own being into perspective. Like you feel so small, you know, but like you get to be a part of something so much bigger and so much more beautiful than you could ever imagine. And t to take that, you know, and to, to put it on the scale of I'm up in space and I'm looking down, <laughs> what is that moment like for you? Goodness. Wow. Life changing. And, um, wow. and I love that perspective that you have because I'm also a traveler. I love international travel. That's my favorite kind of travel. Um, cause yeah. I really love to meet other cultures and, and just see different parts of the world that are yes. so different from where I live. Um, and so when I got this out of the blue invitation to go to space, like I had not applied for anything. I get a phone call one day saying, do you want to go to space? That is um, amazing. <laughs> it was shocking. Um, it was so exciting <laughs> and scary and all the things. Um, mm -hmm. But when I saw the earth from space, I actually had a very similar perspective. Um, actually, I'll, I'll never forget the moment I saw the earth from this cupola window that we had on our spacecraft. So on our spacecraft, we flew the largest window that had ever been flown in space. And wow. from it, we could see the whole 360 view of the earth all at once with the Amazing. blackness of space around it, with stars, with no the moon. Way. And um, the, the moment we first opened the cupola, I was working. I was busy doing procedures. And I even, uh, my friend captured a video and I say, all right, we've got some work to do as they're opening the cupola. <laughs> and then there's this moment where I just look up and I see the earth. And I am just suspended in the air, paralyzed oh by how beautiful it is and how it made me feel. And yeah. it was just so overwhelming um, getting that perspective. And I spent three days in orbit, spending a lot of time looking wow. at our planet and just trying to just feel all the things. But one thing that I really took away was, was you, you feel so small. Um, and it also, you just feel so united with your fellow earthlings because from that perspective, the world is beautiful. We are all one. And that was something I really took away. Um, but at the same time, the earth is small. We went around the earth every 90 minutes. Um, That's and so it was, wild. It was wild. We went around the earth about 46 times during our mission. Oh my gosh. And so That's it was that, that, like we were, we're so, like I'm so small on this planet, but at the same time, the planet is small and we're all one. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Oh, I didn't realize that you were doing that so many times. Like, yeah, that's a, uh, that's, that's really incredible. We, yeah. we flew at 17,500 miles an hour. That is so great. Crazy. Did it feel fast to you or just because of the it didn't context? Like we it moving. just, wow. Now launching wow, so... felt fast because with gravity, we yeah. could, uh, I remember hearing with launch the fastest whooshing sound I'd ever heard. Um, oh. and because of how fast we were going, we felt a lot of increased G forces, a lot of increased gravity yeah. on us about four and a half times regular gravity. Um, but Jeez. it was fun. It was a fun ride. It's amazing. Incredible. You know, we, we use the phrase like get the 30,000 foot view or whatever. It's <laughs> sort of like, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's like you have this way of looking at life, um, that you can see things a little better in some ways when you're that high up, you know? Um, you know, for you now, you know, you've had much more than a 30,000 foot view <laughs> of, of the world, but you, uh, I would say probably even a, of life, you know, you have this really pretty grand, unique perspective on life, mm -hmm. given what you you have gone through, uh, and to now what you've been able to do and accomplish and experience. If you could go back to your 10 year old self and tell her, and maybe even your mo your mom, you know, your family at the time. Like, what would you say? Like, what's that like, you know, 500,000, I don't know how, how far that is, <laughs> foot view. <laughs> That's, Space view. What, how many miles? How many feet is that? I mean, it's got to be a little. I think it was 360 miles. Okay. Wow. What's that 360 mile f view? 
<laughs> I was like, fifty. you. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I would not tell 10-year-old Haley that she would become an astronaut. Um, I think the beauty of life is you don't know what's going to happen. And that's yeah. why on your hardest days, you have to hold on to hope that there will be better ones. But wow. I would tell 10-year-old Haley, I would say, I know right now the future looks really dim, but it's going to be better than you can ever imagine. And I think that applies for a lot of people. I think it's especially yeah. going through hard times. It can be really hard yeah. to see the light at the end of the tunnel and imagine better days, but there will be better days. And that. you never know what's going to happen in this life. But for me, I've, I've felt, I, even back then when I was going through cancer treatment, I felt like there was a purpose behind all of it. And as life has gone on, I've seen that purpose time and time again. And I feel like, there's going to be even more purpose that I don't even know it's going to happen yet, but that's exciting. Yeah. That's, that's you still got a lot left to go. There's <laughs> more, more excitement to, to come. So yeah. I believe it. that's really cool. Yeah. Your story is amazing. Yeah. So inspirational and yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And you've got a book coming out like really soon. Yeah. Uh, this, this episode will go up maybe a couple weeks before the book comes out. So people can pre-order or if they're listening later on, they can order, um, tell us a little bit about that. Like what, what's the book? It's called wild ride, right? Yes. What, what do you want to see happen with that? So the, um, the full title of my book is wild ride, a memoir of IV drips and rocket ships. And it's dang, that's good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, that's um, good. I talk about the, um, kind of getting that cancer diagnosis, how it rocked my world, but and going through cancer treatment, but finding the positivity in that situation, um, and working towards getting my dream job at St. Jude, which did not come the first, second, or third time I applied. I wow. had to really work and gain experience um, to get my dream job. And then I talk about my father's illness. He actually um, got cancer as well, and, uh, and he passed away a few years ago. And so I talk about getting through the grieving process. Um, and then I, I get my dream job. Life is great. I literally think I've peaked in life. <laughs> I thought about a week before I get this call to go to space, I remember sitting in my home thinking, I've peaked. And, uh, <laughs> and then I get this phone call out of the blue saying, do you want to go to space? And I talk about so, how I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that's ever been called out of the blue asking, do you want to go to space? Yeah. Not having applied for anything. Um, yeah. So talk about yeah. that journey, kind of have that emotional journey for me and my family. And then the fun of training. I really go in a lot of detail about how a regular person trains to become an astronaut and um, and then spend a lot of time talking about my time in space, my perspective that I gained um, through space and through all my life journey. And um, That's so fun. And I, I tried, you know, I wanted this to be a lighthearted, fun, funny book. Um, but uh but also interesting to the reader and so i just i can't wait for people to finally get to read it i'm so excited for yeah. it to come out it's exciting well, we cannot wait to read it i yes. released a book uh two months ago uh called the art of getting it wrong and it's just such a fun experience getting to uh to take something that you've put all your heart and time and creativity into and put it out in the world and hope that it encourages people and i know just from hearing your story right now that it's going to encourage a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to tell people. Guys, if you uh, are, you know, a reader or not a reader, uh, is it going to be available audiobook? Do you have an audiobook? Yes, and I actually recorded okay. it myself. And so That's if you the way the to go. Option, you'll hear me read you my life story. <laughs> Excellent. So even if you're not a reader, you can go listen mm -hmm. to the audiobook. It's going to be super uh, engaging. I can already tell. I know you know just from this um, interview. Mm -hmm. um, where can we find you on social media? I am on Instagram at H A Y L E Y A R C Haley Ark, and then I'm Excellent. on Twitter at Arsino Haley. Um, and yeah, one thing I really I've just felt a lot of responsibility to share my space journey um, yeah. because I, I I recognize how fortunate I am to be one of so few who have gotten that experience and perspective. And so I love to continue sharing my space pictures and videos and and talk about love how this that. experience has been. 
Love that. Well, we're going to link awesome. all her uh, socials on the show notes as well as a book, uh, a link to where you can buy her book or audio book. Uh, make sure you get that it's Wild Ride coming out soon. Haley Arsenault, thank you so, so much for joining us on the podcast. Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. This has been <laughs> so fun. Congratulations on your book coming out. And I think we should do a book <laughs> thank trade. You. We should. Yeah, yeah I'll send you, you one go. too. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Love it. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, See you guys. Soon. Man, what an incredible story. Absolutely. She's amazing. amazing. Good yeah. night. I can't even imagine like being able to say coming back down to earth. Or there was that one time she said, my fellow earthlings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really does change your perspective, yeah. I'm sure. It's so encouraging. Such a great perspective. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys check her out. And thank you so much for watching the podcast, for listening to the podcast today. Yeah. Be sure that you subscribe. I'll just say it again. We're going to close with that. We've got all kinds of great stuff happening at the Family Made Network. Uh, we got a mm -hmm. new show that's here. Obviously, Sean and Andrew's couple things is still going with yes. that. If you haven't uh, subscribed to their stuff, make sure you do that as well. But be sure to subscribe here. Leave a review. That just helps us get the word about this out. And we're coming to you every Friday, wherever you listen to your podcasts. So we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>